Now, our second topic for today's show is kind of controversial. You know, we start out every show with our headline. Today's headline was Facebook using devices to read your thoughts so that you could control augmented reality. Sounds a little bit like a conspiracy. Well, our trending topic today is both government policy (laughs) and unfortunately the subject of social media conspiracy. And it's the issue of vaccine passports. Now, before we begin, let me disclose my own bias that I believe in the science of vaccination and I've recently found out that thanks to my compromised immune system, I'm actually now eligible to potentially get a vaccine here in the province of Ontario in April. So to that, I am uh, very happy. I I, I feel a, a little guilty that I get to be at the front of the line to get a vaccine. But hey, that's what you get for having a chronic illness and a disability. So, you know, sometimes there are benefits to being chronically ill. But I do wonder about this whole vaccine passport thing. I mean, when I get my vaccine, yeah, I'll document it. Yeah, I'll brag on social media that I have status because that's what you're supposed to do, right? That That's the whole social media game. I, I just want to make sure I understand the rules. But should I be documenting that I got that vaccine moving forward? Am I going to want proof if I want to travel or if I want to demonstrate that I got it? Is there going to be some kind of blockchain or some kind of authentication? Inquiring minds want to know, but also I'm kind of leading up to a critical perspective here. That, that maybe vaccine passports are not the right solution to either encouraging vaccination or proving that you've been vaccinated especially when we see the specter of technological determinism. Because technological determinism is one of these recurring myths or propaganda in the technology world when big technology companies or governments try to tell you that something's inevitable, that the future is inevitable, that a technology is inevitable. When that's just horseshit, when there's no truth to that. Nothing's inevitable provided you're willing to pay attention And here at MetaViews, oh boy, do we like to pay attention. So I I just recently picked up a subscription to the Washington Post, partly because they had a great sale and because I'm doing a news show, so it's nice to be able to point to somewhat credible news sources. I'm not sure if the Washington Post is a credible news source. It's owned by this billionaire Jeff Bezos, who also owns Twitch and also owns Amazon. So I kind of felt maybe there was a little bit of incestuousness going on. But look at this article that the Washington Post published recently. Vaccine passports are on the way, but developing them won't be easy. And while I agree with the latter half, I'm not convinced that they're on their way. But this article notes that the Biden White House is currently leading an effort to corral more than a dozen initiatives to develop a vaccine passport. And I'm really curious to hear what you guys have to say, those of you watching along in the present, and those of you watching this in the future on YouTube. You know, what do you think about vaccine passports? Are you going to get a vaccine? Are you conscious about a desire to prove that you got that vaccine? Or do you think this is all a distraction? I'm curious to hear your thoughts, but... Before we get there, let me read a few paragraphs from this article. The Biden administration and private companies are working to develop a standard way of handling credentials, often referred to as vaccine passports, that would allow Americans to prove they have been vaccinated against the novel coronavirus as businesses try to reopen. The effort has gained momentum amid President Biden's pledge that the nation will start to regain normalcy (coughs) this summer and with a growing number of companies, from cruise lines to sport teams, saying that they will require proof of vaccination before opening their doors again. The administration's initiative has been driven largely by arms of the Department of Health and Human Services, including an office devoted to health information technology, said five officials who spoke on the condition of anonymity to discuss the effort. The White House this month took on a bigger role coordinating government agencies involved in the work led by coronavirus coordinator Jeff Zients with a goal of announcing updates in coming days, said one official. Now, here's the interesting part about this. 
On the one hand, there are some pretty major industries and business, cruise lines, Ticketmaster, right? So we're talking entertainment, concert, sports, who are all eager to open business, but they recognize that they are prime candidates to be super spreader events. And so their feeling, their hunch, is that if they can mandate that all customers of their service business event have been vaccinated, that that will allow them to open business again. Now, you'll notice that I gagged when I quoted the White House evoking the notion of normalcy, because there will be no normalcy. I think that's ludicrous. But business will resume. Events will resume. And that's where this issue of the vaccine passport is interesting, because it's not being driven by government. It's being driven by industry. I suspect the airlines are also pushing for this because they want people to be able to travel. And the idea is to create environments and services and entire industries that can verify and authenticate vaccination. So all their staff, all their customers, everything, all vaccinated. And that's why they're going for vaccine passports. Now, I get it. I understand where they're coming from. I kind of think it's a little misplaced because I think that they are overestimating the power of vaccines. They're overestimating the efficiency of vaccines and they're underestimating the potential for this virus to mutate and find other ways to spread in spite of the vaccines and in spite of built up immunity and antibodies. And that's why I feel that these vaccine passports conversation are a distraction from the larger efforts to combat this virus. But who am I? I am just this cyberpunk with my friends here, my fellow cyberpunks. So unfortunately, this is an instance where I suspect vaccine passports are going to proceed. The question is whether they are going to make it to the finish line. And that's where the headline on this article sort of said, you know, vaccine passports are on the way, but developing them won't be easy. And here I'm going to make a prediction. I predict that vaccine passports will attempt to be developed, but they will not succeed. And the analogy here was automated contact tracing apps. I mean, here in Canada, the federal government did develop what they called not a tracing app, but a notification app. And it doesn't work. People aren't using it. Provinces aren't using it. It's a failure. And I suspect vaccine passports are going to follow a similar path. If they are developed, and I'm not sure they will be because I could see them failing on the way to be developed. But if they are developed, they're not going to work as designed. They're going to be a false positive. But here's the other issue. What about the politics? What about the politics of even trying to develop a vaccine passport? Let's throw some gasoline on the conspiracy fire. So here I've put into Twitter, vaccine passports. That's it. No other words. And now I'm going to go through some of the responses on Twitter. And these are largely coming from blue check marks and other people who are not your typical conspiracy theory peddlers, as far as we can tell. This guy, Robin Minotti, says vaccine passports are illogical. If the vaccine works, it doesn't matter whether someone else is vaccinated. If the vaccination doesn't work, it does not matter whether someone else is vaccinated. The vaccination status of others is meaningless. I think there's some logic to that. Here's Dr. Simone Gold, doctor, lawyer, warrior. Uh Uh-oh. The government and private companies will soon try to enforce unconstitutional vaccine passports to require inoculation for a pathogen with a 99.97% survival rate. This is not about public health. This is an attack on civil liberties and human freedom. I do agree with the first half of her argument, but certainly not the second half. Vaccine passports must never be allowed. Uh, You know, more conspiracy theory about how vaccine passports predate the pandemic. 
If voter ID is racist, then vaccine passports are also racist. Uh, vaccine passports are going to be difficult to implement in a country where only 42% of the popul- population even has a standard passport. Vaccine passports are a Chinese-style biometric facial recognition social credit system that will control every aspect of life. Like, ridiculous shit, but I don't know. It's hard for me to blame these suckers. Like, I don't agree with them, but I kind of understand their insanity. Nuviak points out they are underestimating how hard a vaccine passport would be to get to work. It'll cause more problems than it solves. 100% Nuviak. A random dude with internet. Does the word racist even have meaning at this point with how much it's thrown around? Absolutely not. You raise a very valid point there, random dude with internet, that when you hear white conservatives using the word racist, you can guarantee they have no idea what the words that are coming out of their mouth mean. And similarly, when you correctly make the argument that there is systemic racism, well then basically you're arguing that racism is so pervasive that everything is in some way racist. And I do kind of agree with this argument to a certain extent. But I think Nuvayak's point here is that vaccine passports are not going to work. I mean, best case scenario, they don't cause a clusterfuck. Worst case scenario, oh my God, I don't even want to think of it. Right? It's kind of like, the you know, it, it's really like, what do you want? Something terrible or something catastrophic? Pick one. Because it really feels that that's what vaccine passports are going to be. You know, random dude with the internet points out, one of those tweets was like, if X is racist and vaccine passports are racist, and you're right, they're totally just using the straw man argument. You know, and you've only been here for 10 minutes and you sort of get the vibe that we're talking about the way in which these things get really stupid and crazy. Now, our next segment, I, I hope you stick with us for this random dude with internet and Nuva because... This next segment, I admit, I don't totally understand, but I'm going to try to figure out as we go along. But the last thing I want to say about vaccine passports is I do think it's something important for us to keep an eye on because I do think that it's going to be uh, a, a perhaps a dangerous situation, certainly a political situation, but I think it might further disincentivize people from getting vaccinated. And that's the whole point. Get vaccinated if you can. Vaccines work. They're not a magic bullet. They're not going to protect you against everything. They're probably not even going to protect you against this current coronavirus and COVID. But they will make its impact less severe. And they will protect other people. So I will try to live stream when I get my own vaccine, hopefully in April. Uh, If not, I will share it on social media and promote it on the internet because I feel that we got to set example. We got to try to do the right thing here in general.